number one and the name of the experiment is Reynolds apparatus. Now let's first of all we will see what is the aim of our experiment. Basically Reynolds apparatus main aim is to determine the Reynolds number and from that Reynolds number we can evaluate the type of flow which is the type of flow either it is laminar or turbulent. So by doing this experiment which is Reynolds apparatus we can find out Reynolds number and from that value of Reynolds number we can say the flow type which is the type of flow either it is laminar or turbulent. You can see the basic diagram on your screen the main apparatus contains the tank in which water is filled. You can see here. Here the water is filled and in the water tank one capillary tube is inserted. See here. This is the capillary tube which is inserted here and from the top of that tube there is a container in that we have fill up the dye colored dye. So that colored dye when it is entered inside this glass tube we can see the flow of that dye in that tube. Let's see in detail what is the theory of this experiment. Basically in Reynolds experiment the ratio of inertia to viscous forces was observed and which is a dimensionless quantity and that quantity is related to viscosity, average pipeline velocity and geometrically similar boundary conditions. So I can say that Reynolds experiment is the ratio of inertia to viscous force and it is a dimensionless quantity. And that quantity depends on which factors? It depends on viscosity, average pipeline velocity and other boundary conditions. Right? And for a homogeneous Newtonian fluid. Now we are familiar with uh, these words Newtonian fluid, non-Newtonian fluid. Right? So for a homogeneous Newtonian fluid, this dimensionless ratio is known as Reynolds number and it is denoted by the symbol Re. Or in some books you can see NRE. Both are fine. It is denoted by NRE as well as RE. So for a homogeneous Newtonian fluid, this dimensionless ratio is known as Reynolds number and it is denoted by RE. And it is expressed as the formula RE is equals to rho V D by mu. Again I am repeating RE is equal to rho V D by mu where rho is the density of the fluid, V is the average velocity of the fluid, D is the diameter of our glass tube and mu is the viscosity of the fluid. So you can see here NRE is rho V D upon mu and it is a dimensionless quantity. NRE is a known as dimensionless number. Fine. Now from this we can determine the type of flow. How we can determine the type of flow based on this Reynolds number. So when you will calculate this value of D V rho upon mu you will get one quantity which is the dimensionless number. And if this Reynolds number value comes less than 2100. Remember this thing. When NRE or RE value comes less than 2100, that type of flow is known as the laminar flow. If RE value is greater than 4000, if RE value is greater than 4000, it is known as turbulent flow. And if RE value is in between 2100 and 4000, then it is known as the transition region. These three values are very important. Again, I am repeating. RE value comes less than 2100, then it is known as the laminar flow. If RE value is greater than 4000, it is known as the turbulent flow. If RE value is in between 2100 and 4000, it is known as transition region. You have to remember these values. Right? Now, let's see how the 
set up experimental set up look, look like see this this is our experimental setup you can see this is the capillary glass tube i can say this is the glass tube here at the top there is a dye tank in that we will fill up the dye tank here dye here which is of any color so when the and the water is flowing from this tube from upper tank to lower tank now you can see here there is a small needle like tube here see so when i'll start the flow of the dye from this dye tank the dye transfer from this tube to this glass tube so you can visible this flow of dye so in construction of this experimental setup what is the basic apparatus consist of the basic reynolds apparatus consist of a glass tube you can see here with one end having bell mounted entrance this is here connected to water tank this is our water tank and at the another end the glass tube cork is provided see here this is the cork or i can say valve so this valve is provided at this another end fine so when i start the flow of water which is coming in this tube and when i'll start the dye flow the dye will transfer from this capillary tube and i can control the flow of water from this valve so flow of water can be measured with the help of measuring cylinder and the stopwatch with the help of this measuring cylinder and the pipeline is at this back side of the apparatus you can see in the video which i'll explain you in our next slide the flow rate of water can be measured with the help of measuring cylinder and the stopwatch and a capillary tube is introduced centrally in the bell mouth this and the this tube dye is fed from the small container this is small container placed at the top of the tank right so this is the basic explanation of our experimental setup you will be very much clear in the video of our experiment but before that let's understand the working procedure of our experiment how we can proceed with the experiment first of all we will fill the tank with water up to the dye tank and then fill the dye into the dye tank so first of all we will fill the tank with water and dye tank with dye then start the flow of water from the supply tank and start the flow of dye both the flow we can start simultaneously water flow and dye flow for getting the different pattern of dye in the tube now remember we have to see both the type of flow laminar flow as well as the turbulent flow so for getting different pattern of dye in the tube control the flow of water flowing through the tube to get difference between the laminar and turbulent flow experimentally we have to control the flow of water flowing through the tube so the discharge must be varied gradually the moment when the dye deviates from its straight line pattern when the velocity of the water flow rate is low the dye flows nearly straight and when we will increase the flow rate of water the dye movement varies or deviates from the straight line pattern corresponding to the condition of the water flow rate right so the discharge flowing in the tube at that moment is measured so when whenever we are changing the flow rate of the water we will measure that flow rate of water again we will change the position of the valve again we are measuring the flow rate of water and from that flow rate of water we can easily calculate velocity let's see how and then repeat these procedure 3 4 times to obtain different values of the nre and from that we can get the type of the flow let's see the video so you will be very much clear from that see this is the working video of our experiment reynolds apparatus see the water flow rate is continue coming from this tank dye is filled here 
which is coming from this. See. See the flow of dye. Here there is a purple color dye we are introducing. See, the flow is merely clear visible. See, the flow of dye is like this. So, at that flow of water, we are measuring the flow rate with the help of this measuring cylinder and stoppers. Here for this first reading, I have measured the flow of water for 10 seconds. I have collected this much water for 10 seconds. Fine. So, this much of water is collected. This much of water is collected in 10 seconds. So, note down this quantity of water collected and time 10 seconds. Now, for the next reading, I am changing the flow rate of valve with the help of this. Flow rate of water with the help of this valve. You can see here. I have changed the valve position to change the water flow rate. Now you see the dye flow pattern. See. Notice that the flow of dye is like this now. See. It is very much deviating. Now at this position of water flow rate, I am again measuring the water flow rate for a particular time period. Now the flow rate of water is high so I am collecting the water for only 5 seconds. You can see more water is collected for 5 seconds. So here we have taken 2 readings. Here we have taken 2 readings. First reading is how much water collected for 10 seconds and second by changing the valve position I have increased the water flow rate and for that I am collecting the water quantity for particularly 5 seconds. Now let's see how from this water flow rate data I can calculate Reynolds number and for that the observation given to us are diameter of the glass tube is given. See the inside diameter of glass tube is given 25. And the kinematic viscosity of water is given 1 into 10 is to minus 6 meter square per second. Now what is kinematic viscosity? Kinematic viscosity is nothing but the dynamic viscosity divided by density. So these two data are given to us. Diameter of the glass tube which is 25 mm and kinematic viscosity which is dynamic viscosity divided by density is 1 into 10 is to minus 6 meter square per second. So, these two datas are with us. Now, let's start the calculation. For calculation, we are using the formula of Reynolds number which is rho v d by mu. Rho is density, v is velocity, d is diameter and mu is the viscosity. So, by using this Reynolds number equation from the flow rate which we have taken experimentally, from the flow rate data taken from experiment, we can calculate the value of Reynolds number and from that we know the type of flow. Let's see how we can calculate. For our first reading which we have already taken, volume collected is 100 ml. See, volume collected is 100 ml for time t 10 seconds. Right. So, in 10 seconds we have collected 100 ml volume of water. Kinematic viscosity of water is given 1 into 10 raised to minus 6 meter square per second. Now, the volumetric flow rate we can calculate because we have with us volume collected and time. So, volumetric flow rate will be, now here I have converted ml into meter cube which is 10 raised to minus 4 meter cube. 100 ml is equal to 10 raised to minus 4 meter cube divided by 10 second as we have collected this much of water for 10 seconds. So, now volumetric flow rate is 10 raised to minus 4 meter cube per 10 second which is 10 raised to minus 5 meter cube per second. So, this is the volumetric flow rate. Now, from the volumetric flow rate we can easily calculate velocity because we have already the diameter of the tube. So, velocity is volumetric flow rate divided by cross section area. Volumetric flow rate is 10 raised to minus 5 divided by cross section area is pi by 4 d square. So, 
10 raise to minus 5 divided by pi by 4 diameter is 0 0.025 meter. So 10 raise to minus 5 divided by pi by 4 0 0.025 square. When you solve this, you will get the value of velocity is 0 0.0203 meter per second. So now I have the value of velocity v which is 0 0.0203 meter per second. Now we have all the values of formula Reynolds number. So R is equal to rho V D by mu. So velocity is 0 0.023, diameter is 0 0.025 and kinematic velocity is what? Di kinematic viscosity is what? Dynamic viscosity divided by density. So I am taking density on the below of dynamic viscosity. So mu by rho is 1 into 10 raise to minus 6. So, Re is equal to 0 0.025 into 0 0.0203 divided by 1 into 10 raise to minus 6. When you will solve this, you will get the answer of Re is equal to 507.5. Now, you can see that this value is less than 2100. So, I can easily say that this type of flow is of laminar because the value of the Reynolds number is 507.5 which is less than 2100. So, the type of flow will be laminar. Now, let us solve for the second reading. Second time, we have changed the flow rate of water with the help of valve. Volume collected is 650 ml. Time required for that is 5 seconds. Kinematic velocity, viscosity is given. Now, in the same way of reading 1, we can calculate the volumetric flow rate for this reading 2 which is 6.5 into 10 raise to minus 4 meter cube per 5 second which is equal to 1.3 into 10 raise to minus 4 meter cube per second. Now we can easily calculate velocity. Velocity is volumetric flow rate divided by cross section area. So 1.3 into 10 raise to minus 4 divided by pi by 4.025 whole square which is equal to 0.265 meter per second. So, velocity for the second reading will be 0 0.265 meter per second. So, now I can calculate Reynolds number. Reynolds number is equal to 0 0.025 into 0.265 divided by 1 into 10 to minus 6, which is equal to 6625. Now, you can see that this value of Reynolds number is greater than 4000. So, this type of flow is known as the turbulent flow as the value is greater than 4000. So, we have taken two reading. One will be of laminar flow and one will be for turbulent flow. Right. So, by this way, by performing this experiment of Reynolds experiment, we can calculate the Reynolds number and from that we can know the type of flow. Now, let us see where this experiment or where this Reynolds number is applicable. Basically, Reynolds number plays an important role in the calculation of friction factor in the fluid mechanics. When we have to calculate the friction factor at that time, Reynolds number is very important. It plays an important part in the testing of wind lift on an aircraft because there the main parameter is the speed of the wind. Right. So, these are the two major applications where these apparatus is used. So, what is the conclusion of our experiment? By the use of Reynolds experiment, we can determine the type of flow by calculating the value of Reynolds number. So, this is about our experiment number 1 which is Reynolds apparatus which is used for determining the type of flow. So, I am completing this session here. I hope this experiment is clear to all. Thank you.